eye-to-eye -eye with thyroid eye disease. Active and inactive phases of thyroid eye disease. Hi, Dr. So Parker again. Welcome to Section 7 of Pace of Production's Thyroid Eye Disease 10-part series. In prior video sections, we discussed the basics of thyroid function and disorder, autoimmune diseases, and the characteristics of thyroid eye disease. In this section, we review the typical progression and natural history of the disorder and try to give some perspective on the questions, how long does it last? How bad will it get? In the next section, Section 8, when we discuss management of thyroid eye disease, it will be essential to understand the active and inactive phases that we will now explain in this video. The material in this series is meant to be easily understood. Parts, however, may be somewhat dense and you may wish to review particular sections. If you have suggestions on how to improve this series, we welcome your comments. You may find us on the web at www.plasticeyesurgery.com, email us at info at pesahouston.com, write to us at Plastic Eye Surgery Associates, 3730 Kirby Drive, Suite 900, Houston, Texas, 77098, or telephone us at 713-795-0705. Thyroid eye disease has two phases, an active phase and an inactive or stable phase. Let's represent the course of thyroid eye disease with a graph. The vertical axis will be severity of eye disease, in other words, how bulgy the eyes are, how retracted the eyelids are, how much optic neuropathy there is, etc. The horizontal axis is time. We see that there is an active phase of thyroid eye disease in which the eyes demonstrate progressive and or persistent signs and symptoms of change or active inflammation. There may be continued chemosis, progressive proptosis, changing eyelid retraction, or alterations in the amount of eye movement disorder and associated double vision. For some period of time, these signs and symptoms all worsen, and then they stop changing for a while and more or less plateau. After some time, there is often a degree of improvement in the eye findings as residual swelling slowly slips away. And then a final state of stability, another plateau. Notice that the second plateau never reaches the baseline from which the person started. So a person is typically left with residual changes. Their eyes may be more affected than before the disease started, but not as bad as they were at the peak of the disease. We call the changing period the active phase, and in our experience this phase lasts an average of 18 months. However, the phase duration is quite variable from person to person. We've seen the active phase end in two weeks, but we've also seen it last as long as five years. Notice that there is often improvement toward the end of the active phase. So the active phase disease does not necessarily mean constant wor worsening of the disease, it simply means change. Eventually, over weeks, months, or years, the thyroid eye disease always burns itself out, and the eyes stop changing, and we call that period the stable or inactive phase. The eventual goal, of course, is to move from the stable phase to the full recovery of eye comfort, protection, function, and normal appearance. Once again, here's a plot of time against eye disease severity. This again is the curve that we've just shown you where the disease gets progressively worse, plateaus, improves, and then plateaus again. Notice that the second plateau is not a smooth line. That's because people with thyroid eye disease seem to have a degree of day-to-day -day variability, even after entering the stable phase. Roughly 95% of people will follow this curve, but that means that 5% do something else. After some time, maybe weeks, months, or years, maybe even decades, about 5% of people will reactivate their thyroid eye disease after having been in the stable phase for some time. The numbers shown here are the actual numbers of patients seen in our practice through 2013. After weeks, months, years, or decades, 10% of the 5% of people, or roughly 5 in every 1,000 people, will have thyroid eye disease reactivate again. After weeks, months, years, or decades, 30% of the 10% of the 5% of people will reactivate again. In order for me to know the next rate of reactivation, 
I would need to have seen some 20,000 people with thyroid eye disease, but I hope to be well retired before that happens. My guess though is that the percentage increases again. Although the percentage of people who reactivate appears to increase with subsequent reactivations, we're talking about very few people here. Most people, 95%, never have a single reactivation. And practically speaking, multiple reactivations are progressively rare. When we start talking about someone who has reactivated more than three or four times, the picture becomes more muddied, as it is often difficult to tell by history or photographs when one active phase stopped and the next started. Whether there were actually separate active phases or just a single prolonged active phase. Also note that the baseline, the stable phase for individuals who reactivate even once, is more rocky with more day-to-day -day fluctuations than a person who never reactivated or reactivated only once. These people also tend to have more fluctuations over time in their thyroid hormone levels, but the fluctuations in hormone levels rarely coincide with changes in the eyes. Here's an example of what reactivation might look like. This sweet woman with thyroid eye disease has her left eye more affected than her right. We repositioned her left eye, and now it is even more clear how her right eye is also proptotic or bulging. Here she is after her second eye is also decompressed. If anything, the right eye is actually farther back in her head than the left. One year later, she reactivated her right eye, and you can see how proptotic or bulging it has suddenly become again. The good news is we were able to further decompress the right eye. So here she is shown before on the left and after on the right, three orbital decompressions to reposition her eyes. At this point, you may be wondering about several questions. What, for example, makes thyroid eye disease start? In section three of this video series, we said that there has to be a genetic predisposition, but then there also has to be some kind of a trigger, an event or an environmental factor. Some of these we know, but there are probably many we don't. Today, a more compelling question for researchers and physicians alike is what makes the active phase stop? If we know this, then perhaps we can turn thyroid eye disease off before it creates mayhem. In fact, not only could we turn off thyroid eye disease, but perhaps we could control all of autoimmune disorders. The answer to this question probably relates to each person's immune system. Without creating 10 more sections of this video series, we'll simply say that all of our immune systems have two arms. One arm activates or turns on and revs up our natural defense to disease, helps us to fight off infections and cancers, and cleans up damaged tissues from injuries. The second arm recognizes when the insult or danger has passed and sends our soldier proteins back to the barracks. As you might imagine, the control over these two arms is very complex. If it were to be simple, we would already have complete and easy cures for cancer, allergies, and autoimmune disorders. Another related question is why is reactivation generally rare, but some people reactivate and others reactivate many, many times? Again, the answer to this probably relates directly to each individual's immune system and the control or lack of control their body has over the two arms of their immune system. So how do we know whether someone is in the active or inactive phase, whether or not they're getting better or worse? What test or study determines these phases? Frustratingly, there's really no test or study to guide us. Blood levels and x-rays don't tell the story. Instead, the determination of active or inactive phase is made by examination. A change either worsening or improving means a person is still in an active phase. If you're wondering what kind of changes are mentioned or monitored, a change in any of the things we already discussed in section six of this video series. Many people are very frustrated by thyroid eye disease because as we discussed in the videos in sections one, two, and five, Although some laboratory and x-ray studies can be supportive, the actual diagnosis of thyroid eye disease is made by clinical examination alone. And it can be confusing and frightening when another healthcare provider says, all your tests are normal. You don't have that problem, that thyroid eye disease problem. Further complicating the picture is the fact that 
Whether or not a person's disease is active or inactive is also made by clinical examination alone. Understandably, having thyroid eye disease is not easy. The management of thyroid eye disease often takes several office visits. Why? During an initial examination, we can see where a person is at that moment, how much their eyes are involved. We can see that there is thyroid eye disease, but that doesn't tell us where on this series of curves a person falls. Some features of the examination may suggest active or inactive phases, but we can't tell for sure. Repeated examination is necessary. Photographs and a clear history of eye disease progression can be very helpful. With good documentation, maybe one visit is enough. However, for most people, at least two or three visits, several months apart, are required to be fairly sure whether or not a person is in the active or inactive phase. Because with two visits showing no change, it may be difficult to know whether a person is in the first plateau of the active phase or actually in the inactive phase. Here are the essential points of this video section. Determination of active and inactive phases is made by clinical observation alone over several visits. No blood test, x-ray, or ultrasound provides this information. The active phase may continue for years, but on average lasts about 18 months. People may improve during the active phase. Active phase means change, not necessarily worsening. Recognizing whether or not someone is in the active or inactive phase is essential for the treatment of thyroid eye disease, which we will now discuss in the next section of this video series. The active changing phase during the initial upslope of the active changing phase, when things are progressing and worsening, that is when there is a risk for vision loss with thyroid eye disease.